You're probably here because you already know and love Baccarat Rouge 540, one of the most cult favorite fragrances of all time, and now you want to discover more from Maison Francis Kirkjohn. So welcome into the show. We are going to talk about all things Maison Francis Kirkjohn. I will do an entire review and shopping guide of every single fragrance from this collection, even some that are no longer around. This is my personal collection, but I have an entire box of samples that I have been chipping away at for years and I am familiar with all of them now enough to give you guys a pretty good overview of each one. Let us jump in with the Queen Baccarat Rouge 540. This, as you guys may have already heard, is one of the most addictive, intoxicating fragrances on the market today. It is unique. It has a certain like ethereal light, sweetness, woodiness. It's captivating and it's magical. And even though so many dupes exist, there is nothing quite like it. This would be number one if you are just starting out into the house. Try Baccarat Rouge 540. It's the most mass appealing. It is one of the most captivating, unique, easy gift material, although very pricey. So of course this would be the number one recommendation to check out if you're starting out. But for me personally, it is not one of my favorites. I'm just gonna try to give you guys a bit more of an ob objective overview with a sprinkle of my own opinions. Let's go with Gentle Fluidity Gold. Gentle Fluidity Gold is a vanilla juniper scent with a strong woody ambery effect to it. This almost has uh, like a dry woody quality and a really captivating, refreshing juniper scent, a bit of muskiness and a delightful, sweet, delicious vanilla. It is like a vanilla extract type of vanilla. If you like vanilla 28, Forget Vanilla 28, this is on a whole new level. This has a similar type of vanilla, but they've done some magic to this that exists nowhere else. There is a reason why this is one of the most complimented fragrances on TikTok. I have talked about the most complimented fragrances on TikTok in this video where I did a whole investigation into what's viral over there. So check that video out next. Um, Gentle Fluidity Gold was definitely one of them. For me, I find this just a little bit sharp on the dry woodiness, but people that like a dry woody quality, this definitely performs really well and is one of the nicest vanillas just in the world. Let's go through my empty. This is Oud Satin Mood. I went through two bottles, not on my own, but because of my decan shop, as you guys can see, I have a lot of fragrances. I do operate a decan shop, the scented.ca, so no, I did not wear all of this myself. I had some help from you guys. This was my favorite oud scent for the longest time, and this is a vanilla oud rose kind of powdery scent. Very powdery, still captivating and beautiful. All of the MFK fragrances, they have a certain type of magic. I would recommend this for women that are just starting out discovering oud scents. It is smooth, it's sweet, it's powdery, it smells incredibly, incredibly luxurious, rich. You're gonna feel like just Her Majesty in this fragrance. This fragrance though, do not wear it to a restaurant when you're eating a lot. The scent is overpowering. Some fragrances do not work with food situations as I personally learned. So I was all about the Oud Satin Mood for a very, very, very long time and it was my favorite and all be all, but now I have hopped on over to Oud Silk Mood, which is more unisex. I would say more masculine than this one where the rose and vanilla are heavier. This one is more about the actual Oud. It is still incredibly smooth, slightly herbaceous floral. There's a bit of chamomile in here and there's no vanilla in this one. This is all about the Oud, a bit of Gaillac, rose. So it is more on the dry side. I love this one for me right now, but I've been dabbling in the Oud world for a few years now. So it did take me a little while to feel like, okay, yeah, I can totally wear this. I can pull it off comfortably. So yeah, this I would say is less intro than this one. So depending where you're at in your fragrance journey, there's that. There's also the full on Oud, which we will get to and the rest of the Oud MFK collection. But these are the two that I find are the most beginner friendly, the Oud Silk Mood and the Oud Satin Mood. Let's jump into some lesser known, but equally amazing ones and We'll go with 724 since it's right here. 724 came out a couple years ago and it is a refreshing citrusy scent with musk, 
it's definitely unisex. It is not my favorite of their citrusy refreshing scents and I wouldn't say this is a must have. This has mostly aldehydes, quite a strong citrus accord, jasmine and white musk, though it does have a bit of a rubbery dry down. Like the musk comes through sometimes a bit rubbery. I would say forego the 724 and go for just the Aqua Universalis. They are quite similar. The Aqua Universalis is a lot smoother less long lasting that's true this one is a lot longer lasting i'll get uh, maybe eight hours with this i'll only get about four with this one but it simply smells better there's a lily of the valley in here there's a very refreshing gentle almost like aquatic type of vibe i mean obviously it's called aqua universalis they're trying to give you this light aquatic vibe there's lemon and musk and i feel like if you like dolce gabbana light blue this would be a much more elevated similar type of scent profile they are not similar fragrances but i think if you were somebody for example gifting a gift a fragrance gift to someone that you know likes light blue you are more than likely almost guaranteed that that person will enjoy this scent this one is the most mass appealing most easily giftable easy grab and go type of scent citrus and musk mostly with lily of the valley next up is amorous femme Amorous Femme is a powdery, but also kind of a citrusy, piney type of scent. It's very unique, refreshing, elegant, and feminine. There is also an Amorous Om. We will get to that. I actually find that one pretty unisex. But Amorous Femme is the one that I often wear. This is a perfect um, kind of scent to wear to a formal occasion, somewhere like say church or a family event, a garden party, what have you. This is very outdoorsy, refreshing, very elegant smelling, floral, likable. People will probably compliment you. This is not a massive projector. This is about, you're gonna get like a foot and a half with this one. The trail is so-so. I, I will not say this is a massive trail producer but you will smell yourself and you will love how you smell. This is a perfectly balanced scent of floral, woody, and citrus. I would say if you like Coco Mademoiselle or that type of thing, this again, doesn't smell like it, but if you were say gifting a fragrance to someone who does like Coco Mademoiselle and you wanted something even a bit more elevated, this. This does not have any patchouli. There will not be any weirdness with this one. The woody notes that are in here are the amorous and vetiver. It's a really nice musk in here. Just a super likable, luxurious smelling fragrance. Very easy grab and go as well. And once we're through with every single fragrance, I will give you my personal five favorites. So next up is Feminine Pluriel. This is more powdery than the amorous. Feminine Pluriel is about rose, iris, violet, a refreshing lily of the valley, and like this is ultra feminine. This is for somebody who does like a bit of a powdery note. I would say if you like um, Givenchy Irresistible in the square bottle, or even Yves Rocher Comme une Evidence, those types of scents where there's a, a powdery facet from like uh, a rose or an iris and then some kind of like sweet refreshing quality, this would be up your alley as well. This one does last quite a bit, so about eight hours with this one, and it does project more than the Amorous Femme that I had just mentioned. This one I will get, like, I will leave a trail. I've gotten compliments on the scent. I've gotten people noticing what I'm wearing. My hubby always smells this on me. It's it's noticeable. I know that the presence is there with this scent. And like with typically with powdery notes, they do tend to stick around for longer. They have a better sillage and they're just stickier molecules. So you'll get performance with this one. You'll get compliments with this one. And I guess the bang for the buck, if you will, is stronger with the feminine pluriel. The amorous femme does have an extray. We'll get to the extrays later. And then the new feminine pluriel, I just picked this up. So the new color is yellowy. The older one was pinky. Not sure why they changed it. Um, it's the same scent. If anything, to me, it smells like maybe a touch more lily of the valley in the new one. I did prefer the old one just I guess I like the pink color more. It makes more sense with this type of scent, but that's a personal comment. Let's dig into my box of everything. 
So from the Aqua Collection, next is Aqua Celestia. There's also an Aqua Celestia Fort, just a stronger version with a bit less mint in my opinion. This one I do like because of this minty lime essence that's going on. It's a bit floral. It's very, very refreshing. I like to mix this up between this one and the Aqua Universalis. I haven't got a full bottle of this one yet because Aqua Universalis is like, it gives me the same satisfaction. But if you're a mint lover and you like a bit more zestiness, that lime zest, you have it here. There's touches of honey mimosa. It's really pretty, very unisex. I think this one is just as unisex, if not slightly more masculine leaning than the Aqua Universalis. And a very nice musky base as well. So this one has more greenness to it. Less of this like fluffy, musky, kind of um, gentle sweetness like with the Aqua Universalis. And a bit more green freshness here. The Fort, very good as well. I don't find it that much stronger to make it worthwhile. I would recommend just going for the original. I like the original more. It has more mintiness. This one has less mintiness, doesn't have the black currant, like, like zesty black currant vibe. And uh, it's nice too, but I just don't think it's worth it. I think the Aqua Celestia, you get about, on my skin, I get about four hours, five hours. This doesn't improve it that much more. Then we're gonna go to Aqua Vitae. This is the Fort version. It's a citrusy scent with a bit of cardamom, a bit of woody facets. There's ylang. It's very sunny and bright with very warm spices. It can work really nicely on a summer day, but the lemon, it has this sort of, it's almost like there's a touch of like coriander in there. It's got a funny spice to it. I would almost prefer the original, which is just more citrus centric, but a touch less boring. So all of the aquas, I would say Aqua Universalis is probably the safest, the most likable, the most worth getting, then Aqua Celestia and then Vitae. They also had once upon a time a 754. It was similar to the 724, but it's no longer around. It had Lily of the Valley, Sweet Pea, Freesia. I still have a little bit left. And this one was really beautiful. Uh, I should have got a bottle of this when I could have. This reminds me of like, if Aqua Universalis had like touches of Amorous Femme or something. It's a floral, more feminine type of um, refreshing citrusy scent and it's really beautiful. If you ever get a chance to snag up the 754, it doesn't have the rubbery quality of the 724, and it's it's more feminine and just beautiful. Too bad they got rid of this one. And then the Aqua Universalis Fort, it is the Aqua Universalis, but stronger. I find that I get pretty good performance with just the original, that I don't need the Fort. I wouldn't go for the Cologne versions or the Fort versions. I would just keep it simple and just go for the standard like EDTs. They are pretty good performance for citrusy scents and there's not enough nuance in the other variations to make it worth it. So the Oud Satin Mood Extra, I have worn a few times. I prefer the original. This one is even more sweet and gives more powderiness. If you're somebody who really likes a powdery kind of vanilla vibe to offset the Oud, then you will like the Extra. I prefer more of an Oud presence, so I like the original Oud Satin Mood. Essentially, it's not really giving you more performance. The original's already super strong. It's just a little bit of a tweak, makes it a bit more powdery on my skin. The Grand Soir is pretty epic. I think everybody kind of needs this one. I think it's super sexy on men, especially. And it is an ambery, benzoin, slightly spicy, very inviting scent, very rich smelling and just delectable. It is gorgeous. It is perfect for the cooler weather, like a very gentlemanly scent. I think women can easily pull this off, but to me, this is like, like if I smell this on a guy, like he knows what it's about. So it's definitely one of the best ones for men out of the entire MFK collection. Just uh, especially if you like like a warm, inviting kind of ambery fragrance. Gentle Fluidity Silver is a tweak on Gentle Fluidity Gold, as you may have guessed. Same notes in different capacities, so same kind of vanilla juniper thing, but this has more of the juniper. It's quieter on the vanilla, and I really love this. This doesn't have that dry woodiness that the Gentle Fluidity Gold has, this is a lot more refreshing, it's crisp. It really does smell kind of like silver. It gives you this kind of metallic-y mineral essence to it. 
And I think it's a really good one for men for the summer, for like the heat, especially if you're in humidity. This is perfect to offset that. It's very crisp. There is notes of nutmeg as well and the musky woody base, but uh, easy, pleasant, like really you can't go wrong. Now, Amaris Homme and Amaris Homme Extreme. My hubby actually had the original Amaris Homme, used it up, we didn't repurchase it, but it was a really nice, easy wearing, refreshing, citrusy, powdery scent with tonka. It gave it like a fuzzy scent. It also had soft touches of like coconut and even touches of chocolate chocolate that just gave it a really interesting kind of powdery, delectable nuance, very fuzzy smelling. I found it unisex, the Amaris Homme Extrait. It, it doesn't have those delectable qualities. It has a strong note of tonka and the citrusy herbaceous touches. So I think that the Amaris, either the Extrait or the original, are both perfect for gifting, very easy to like, kind of has that like Chanel Allure DNA sort of idea, but obviously a more elevated, masterfully blended, really well refined. It just, it smells familiar, you know, it's nothing too complex and like really out there as a niche scent. They're all really kind of entry level niche in terms of their scent profile. They're all quite likable. None of them are really challenging. So pretty easy gifting on all levels. But in terms of which one I prefer, I think I actually prefer the original um, Amaris Homme. Now we have a la rose and lo a la rose. I have not purchased these even though they are amazing rose fragrances because I find that actually the rose scent from Bath and Body Works is not far behind this one and the performance on them is not that strong. So I just like use the samples every now and again. If I'll find it for a steal, I'll buy it, but it's one of those scents that I don't find it to have enough uniqueness to make it worth the splurge unless you really just have the money to spend and you love a fresh rose scent. This is just true rose. Um, the A La Rose, I actually like it a little bit less than the Low A La Rose, which is fluffier and softer, more velvety. I, I find the original A La Rose a bit more green. So I like the Low A La Rose personally. So it just depends. If you really like that fresh cut stem rose, then it's the Ala Rose. If you like a little bit more softer, fuzzier, lighter wearing, um, but like kind of velvety rose, then Lo Ala Rose. Not too much to say about them. And they're just like really supple, bright, like young, fresh roses. A lot on the market similar to them um, that I find maybe not a must have from the MFK collection. Now we're on to the ouds. There is oud cashmere mood and there is oud. <sighs> oud cashmere mood is probably the most challenging one. Just the original oud is beautiful. I find it masculine leaning. I would not wear this personally. There's a quite a strong saffron in here. You smell a lot of patchouli as well with that oud. It's not a barnyard oud. It's not sticky. It doesn't smell dirty. It's actually still kind of a fresh dry oud, but it has this like masculine quality. The patchouli really gives it a masculine edge and the saffron is really aromatic, like really beautiful in this. So I would say one of the sexiest masculine oud fragrances that are like really oud centric. Oud cashmere mood, it's challenging. It's, it's intense, not quite barnyardy, but I always struggled with this one. This is just very, very oud like maybe borderline going into the like barnyardy territory. It's Lausch and Oud. It's got a bit more like pinchiness to it. Got a bit more, almost like incense Oud. It's a bit intense for my tastes personally, but for Oud lovers, obviously this is quite beautiful. Also leathery facets, super masculine and super cold weather. I find this the most challenging of all their Ouds, Oud Cashmere Mood. Petit Matin really gives you that burst of sunshine in the morning. It's a like a warming ray of sunshine, just like grazing your face. Another citrusy, musky type of scent. More orange blossom in this one. It's very uplifting, very bright and happy. I would say this is my favorite, if not my second favorite after the Aqua Universalis in the Citrus collection. Not sure if this is still available. I haven't seen it available on their website in a very long time. I've had this sample for few years now. And this is Apom Femme. Apom Femme, I don't think they have any more either. 
This is very orange blossom centric, refreshing orange blossom and Ylang, a little bit of a woody base. But again, I don't think that it's unique enough that it's a must have. And if it is discontinued, that is probably why I think it just probably wasn't popular enough. Ciel de Gum is a really amazing ambery scent with cinnamon. It's so inviting and oh, I just love it. I know they just came out with their newest release that I have not tried yet. Reflet d'ambre is supposed to smell like this one, maybe like repackaged, I'm not really sure. Haven't got my nose on that one yet, but if it smells anything like Ciel de Gum, I think it is totally worth having. Like a really nice warm, ambery cinnamon inviting scent. I love a nice like cinnamon note in a fragrance. Le Beau Parfum, this is a really like white floral type of scent. It's a sweet tuberose ylang, custardy, like creamy sweet, very feminine and lovely as well. Definitely on the floral side, kind of a novelty scent in my opinion. After going through everything here, these are my recommended must-haves. My personal favorite, Feminin Pluriel, whether new or old, they both smell basically identical and amazing. I would say either the Oud Silk Mood or Oud Satin Mood. For me personally, the Oud Silk Mood right now, but I acknowledge Satin Mood is probably the more feminine entry one. I would go with Baccarat Rouge. It's a staple for basically anybody, just to at least have an experience. And let's keep it quite simple. The citrusy Aqua Universalis, you can't go wrong, easy grab and go in the summer. And the Gentle Fluidity Gold, for those vanilla lovers, I mean, you gotta, you gotta have a vanilla. You just do. Even I, a vanilla hater, have to have a vanilla. So those are the five that I would say are a great starting point and the must-haves of the MFKs. It is very hard to narrow it down because they're actually all really incredible. And of course, this list would be different for men. Let me sneak that in there real quick. For men, I would say the Amaris Ohm, kind of very easy all-arounder. Grand Soir, you gotta have that warm ambery scent. The Oud, that is like a nice, deep, rich, sexy Oud. You gotta have your Oud. Um, the Aqua Celestia, that refreshing lime and mint scent, and the Gentle Fluidity Silver. It's a really crisp, beautiful, unique, kind of almost metallic touch. So those are the five for men. These are the five for women. I hope you guys enjoyed. Comment down below with your favorite MFK and let me know what collection you would like me to review next. Don't forget, if you want to sample any of these, you can find them on the scented.ca. Always save 10% with the code SAVE10 and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.